欢迎各位同学收看今天的课程。今天我们要讲的是第十章，第十章的主题是 character and setting， 就是角色和场景。我们今天很高兴邀请到了 Taylor 老师 ，Hi， I'm Taylor， 以及两位同学，一位是 Tiffany 同学 ，Hello， I'm Tiffany， 还有 Laura 同学 ，Hi， I'm Laura。In this unit, we will be learning how to create a character and a setting for short story fiction writing. 那在本单元中呢，我们将学习到如何为短篇小说呢创建一个场景及角色。Short stories are often fictional stories detailing a single event. They often range from 1,000 to 10,000 words. 1,000 being about three pages. They tend to be very plot driven. And focus on the actions or events of a single person. 短篇故事呢，通常呢都是虚构的故事，详细描述了单一的事件。小说的字数通常会从一千个字到一万个字。那一千字的小说呢，大概呢只有三页。那我们倾向于描写 plot， 就是剧情，专注于一个人的动作或是一个事件。There isn't enough room to dive deeply into a character's backstory or build complex worlds with multiple characters or events. Such stories are better suited for novellas or novels. 那通常呢，我们会没有足够的字数来深入的描写角色的场景故事，或是多个角色这样的故事，或是一个很复杂的故事。Stories are divided into three main parts: a beginning, a middle, and an end. Similar to narratives, we wrote in the previous chapter. The beginning should introduce a character, the setting, any background information, and begin the story. The middle is where the action takes place. This builds up to the ending with the final climax. 那我们的短篇故事呢，通常呢会分成三个部分：开始、中间以及结束。那我们在上一章呢讲到叙述文，这个跟叙述文是很相似的。那开始的时候，你可能可以介绍 character， 就是角色；然后呢，介绍 setting， 就是场景；然后呢 ，background information， 就是我们的任何的这些背景讯息。然后再开始讲你的故事。那中间呢是发生这个动作的地方。那最后呢就会有一个高潮来作为结束。Many authors pull from their own personal lives to create great works of fiction. Stephen King talks about an incident where his young son chased after a ball and was nearly hit by a truck. Luckily, his son tripped before he got to too close to the road when the truck went by. 许多的作家呢，都从自己的个人生活中来汲取灵感，创作了伟大的小说作品。比如说呢 ，Stephen King 就是史蒂芬金啊，他谈到了一个事件，就是他的这个小儿子。正在追一个球，然后差点呢就被卡车撞到。很幸运的是呢，当卡车要驶过的时候呢，他儿子呢就在这个被卡车撞到之前呢就跌倒了。那因此呢就没有发生憾事。King thought to himself, what would have happened if his son hadn't fallen and had actually been hit by the truck? How would he have felt? What would he be willing to do to bring his son back to life? It was the idea that led him to write one of his more popular novels, *Pet Cemetery*. Stephen, he himself just thought, "Ah, if his son had not fallen, then in fact, the car was hit by a truck. What would happen? What would he feel? What would he do? What would he do to bring his son back to life? What would he do to bring his son back to life? What would he do to bring his son back to life? What would he do to bring his son back to life? What would he do to bring his son back to life? What would he do to bring Looking for stories from your own life is a great source of inspiration for such stories. For example, what was one of the best moments in your life? What was one of the worst? What is your biggest secret? What is your biggest regret? 因此呢，从自己的生活中寻找故事呢，是短篇小说的 inspiration， 就是灵感的重要来源。例如呢，你一生中最美好的时刻是什么？什么是最坏的时刻？什么是最坏的状况？什么是你最大的秘密？你最大的遗憾是什么呢 ？Think about what character relationships interest you the most: best friends, father-son, mother-daughter, boss-employee. You can even take these ideas and put them all together. For example, what if an employee knows his boss's biggest secret, which was also yours? 
Or how would the worst moment in your life affect two best friends? 那你可以想想说，哪些的角色关系呢是最让你感到有兴趣的？比如说呢，最好的朋友啦，或是父亲儿子之间的关系啦，或是母亲女儿之间的关系，老板员工之间的关系。你甚至呢可以想办法把这些融合在一起。例如说啊，如果有一个员工知道他老板最大的秘密，那那个秘密可能也是你的秘密，那怎么办呢？或者是呢，你的一生中最糟糕的时刻会如何的影响你最好的两个朋友呢？ Once you have decided on a general idea for your story, it's time to start building the characters. Before writing begins, you should create a profile for each of the characters. Let's discuss what information is most pertinent for the profile. 一旦呢，我们确定了故事的总体的思路之后呢，就开始来创建我们的角色。那在开始写作的时候呢，你应该为每个人呢。创建一个人物的特质，那就像一个 list 上面，上面也写的说，哎，这个人物应该有怎么样的特征啊，或怎么样的个性？让我们讨论一下这样的个人特质可以包括些什么？嗯、mm, ，I guess the most important pieces of information are name, age, gender, and appearance. 我想最重要的讯息应该是名字、年龄、性别，还有外表。Very good. But what else do we need to know about our character? 非常好。但是呢，除此之外呢，我们还需要了解角色的哪一些个性呢？哪一些特性呢 ？Um, we need to know if the person is likable, what their likes and dislikes are, maybe if they have some kind of special skills or talent. 我们需要知道这个人是否惹人喜欢。那他们的喜喜欢的东西，不喜欢的东西是什么？那是否具有某种特殊的技能或是才能 ？Exactly. It would also be a good idea to add if the character gets along with his peers or not, and if he or she is optimistic or pessimistic person. 非常好哦。那我们也可以想说，这个角色他是不是 get along with peers， 就是跟他的同伴是不是相处的很融洽，并且呢，他或是这个。他男生的他或是女生的他，他们是不是 optimistic， 是不是乐观的，或者他是不是 pessimistic， 悲观的人呢 ？Now, all of this information may or may not be added into the story, but it can help inform us of what a character is doing and how they are likely to respond. 以上我们所讲的这些东西呀、啊，并不是说都要把它写进我们的故事里面，但是它可以帮助我们了解说这个角色啊会做些什么，以及他们的反应呢是什么。Let's create an example character. Laura, can you give me a name? 让我们现在创建一个角色。Laura， 请告诉我们一个名字。Okay. Um, for example, Smoggy the Frog. 像是有只青蛙叫做 Smoggy。Tiffany, how about age, gender, and their home? 那 Tiffany 同学，你可不可以告诉我们这只青蛙它的年龄、性别，还有它家在哪儿呢 ？Um, old. 它很老。Male. 它是公的。The city zoo. Zoo. 它住在城市的动物园。Okay. And what does he look like? 很好。那它长得像什么样子呢？ Hmm, he has dark green skin with bright green spots. His skin is dark green and has dark green spots. And he has a long orange tongue and huge eyes. He has dark green eyes and huge eyes. Good. And what are his likes and dislikes? Good. Very good. What are his likes and dislikes? Good. Very good. He likes curry-flavored crickets. He likes curry-flavored crickets. And he doesn't like leaving the house. He doesn't like leaving the house. Great. Let's say that he also likes making fun of people behind their backs. And he doesn't like being social. And he really doesn't like Tommy the giraffe because Tommy is too hyper. 好，那我们可能可以加上一些东西。我们也可以说，哎，他喜欢取笑别人。然后呢，他不喜欢社交，而且呢，他真的不喜欢长颈鹿。这长颈鹿的名字叫 Tommy， 因为呢 ，Tommy 呢常常会很兴奋。So what special skill does he have? 那他有怎么样的特殊技能？嗯、mm, ，He can paralyze other animals with his long tongue. 他可以用他长长的舌头让其他动物瘫痪。Oh, I like that idea. So, uh, what can we say about this character? 
。好，那我们关于这个角色呢，我们还可以说些什么呢？ Um, the other animals don't mind him, but he's not the friendliest, so they won't. They don't spend too much time with him. So, other animals don't care about him, and he's not the friendliest. So, they don't spend too much time with him. So, other animals don't care about him, and he's not the friendliest. So, they don't spend too much time with him. So, other animals don't care about him, and he's not the friendliest. So, they don't spend too much time with him. So, other animals don't care about him, and he's not the friendliest. So, they don't spend too much time with him. So, other animals don't care about him, and he's not the friendliest. So, they don't spend too much time with him. So, other animals don't care about him, and he's not the friendliest. So, they don't spend too much time with him. So, other animals don't care about him, and he's not the friendliest. So, they don't spend too much time with him. So, other animals don't care about him, and he's not the friendliest. So, they don't spend too much time with him. So, other animals don't care 动物园的管理员在一起玩，而且这个动物管理员都会带他最喜欢的咖喱口味的蟋蟀，然后他对一切都感到非常的悲观。Excellent. With this profile, we can use descriptive adjectives that show how old he is and his appearance. If he were to run away, for example, we could describe his bones hurting or him easily running out of breath due to his old age. 很好，通过刚才的这样的角色的简介呢，我们就可以选用适当的形容词来显示他的年龄或是他的外貌。比如说呢，如果他先要逃走的话，那我们就可以描述说：“哎呀，他的骨头很痛，或是因为他很年老了，所以他喘不过气来。”等等。When he sees Tommy the giraffe walking towards him, we could more easily describe how he would react, like he runs away, or he makes fun of him, or he does not happily greet Tommy. 那当他看到这个长颈鹿 Tommy， 他朝向他走过来的时候呢，我们就可以很明白知道要选用怎么样的自然描述他的反应。比如说，他可能就会怎么样呢？逃跑，或者可能会取笑 Tommy， 或者是怎么样呢？他就会不跟 Tommy 愉快的打招呼。Now we will move on to the setting. Of course, an important part of writing a story is to tell where it takes place. Most short stories take place in a single place, such as a room. Or a park, or a zoo. 啊，接下来我们要讲的是 setting， 就是我们的场景或是我们的背景。那当然呢，在写故事的时候，有很重要的部分，就是说故事的发生地在哪里。那大部分的短篇故事呢，发生的是在单一的地方，例如一个房间里面呢、啊，或是一个公园呢、啊，或是动物园等等。Franz Kafka's most famous short story, The Metamorphosis, takes place in one family's house. And almost entirely in the protagonist's bedroom, the occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge by Ambrose Bierce takes place in the countryside as a man travels from a bridge to his home. And H. P. Lovecraft's main character in Dagon finds his boat stranded on a new island in the middle of the ocean. 比如说，在弗朗兹·卡夫卡最著名的短篇小说叫做《变形记》里面，发生了一个。家庭的房子里面，几乎全部的故事都发生在这个主人公，这个 protagonist， 他的卧室里面。那又比如说呢，在 Ambrose Bierce 他的这个英西桥上这个故事呢，是发生在乡下。那故事的主角呢，是从桥上走到他的家家中。那接下来呢，是这个 Lovecraft 他的这个 Dagon。Dagon 这个字啊，并不是写错字哦，这个字是没有这个字，就它不是 Dragon， 它就是 Dagon， 它。就是这个新发明的字，这样。那他在他的这个主角呢发生的这个地点，就是他在他的船上。那这个船呢是在一个新的岛屿上。他一醒来的时候，就发现自己在这个岛屿上面了。Once we know where the story will take place, we need to know more about that place. What does it smell like? What is the atmosphere like? What objects are there? What can we hear? 那一旦呢，我们知道故事发生的地方呢，我们就需要更加的了解这个地方。这个地方闻起来像什么呢？这个地点的气氛怎么样呢？那这里有什么样的物品呢？我们在这个地方做些什么呢 ？Using all of our senses, our senses to paint a picture of the setting makes the story more vivid. So before we had the example of the boss's biggest secret, where would that story take place? 用我们所有的感官呢来描写这个场景，使得故事呢更加生动。所以呢，当我们要写这个老板的最大的秘密的这个故事之前呢，我们就要先说说看，哎，这个故事发生在哪里呢？嗯、uh, ，maybe in the office break room， 也许在公司的休息室里吗 ？Oh, great. So now let's create the setting. What do we see in the break room? 很好，那我们现在来创建我们的场景。那我们在这个休息室看到什么？ We could see a coffee machine, 一台咖啡机 a water dispenser, 饮水机 tables, 桌子 
chairs, 椅子 a refrigerator, 冰箱 and cabinets, 橱柜 Good. Maybe some plain white walls and ceiling lights. 非常好。那也许我们可以加上这个我们原来的这个白色的墙壁，或者是我们的天花板灯，就是 ceiling lights. Um, we could also see a microwave, 微波炉 and maybe some other people. 还有，也许还有其他人。Very good. Now that's what we see. Now, what do, would we smell in a break room? 很好，这是我们所看到的。现在想想，我们在这个休息室呢，能闻到什么呢？嗯、um, ，coffee, some recently microwaved food, maybe chicken or fish, a slight hit of chemical smells from a cleaner used in this room. 所以我们可以闻到咖啡，还有一些最近用微波炉烹制的食物，可能是鸡肉啊，或是鱼肉，还有一些清洁房间所使用的轻微化学气味。Very good. Now,、uh, what do we hear in a break room? 很好。那我们现在来看看，我们在这个休息室能够听到什么。Mm, we could hear the refrigerator door opening and closing, people talking, the thing of the microwave, the hum of the lights. 我们可以听到冰箱门开开关关的声音，还有人们在讲话的声音，还有微波炉的那个叮叮声，还有灯光的嗡嗡声。Oh, very good. Now, what might we feel inside such a room? 很好，那我们在这个房间里面会感觉到什么呢？ Mm, the smooth countertops, crumbs on the table, a sticky spot on the table from a badly cleaned coffee spill, 平坦的台面，还有桌子上的面包屑，还有咖啡溅在桌子上留下黏黏的污渍。Yep, these are all good.、Uh, but we also need to talk about the atmosphere too. 啊，这样子讲是不错的。那接下来我们要来谈谈气氛。嗯、mm, ，We could feel tense， 紧张 ，stressful， 压力很大 ，happy， 快乐 ，friendly， 友好的 ，a light atmosphere， 轻松的气氛。Yeah, these are all great ideas. When we know what the area looks like, we draw a better picture for the reader, and we can create an environment for the characters to react to. 这些都是很好的主意哦。当我们知道我们要表达的场所它的外观的时候呢，读者呢就可以从我们的描写中呢看到图像，那并且呢为这个角色创造出可以一个做反应的一个环境。So like instead of saying the character is angry, we can say he reacts to the setting in an angry way. For example, if the employee knows that the boss has been stealing from the company. The employee might approach the boss in the break room, break room slamming his fist on the countertop. So, we don't have to say the character is angry, but we should say the character is angry when he is angry. For example, if a boss has been stealing from the company, then in the break room, the employee might approach the boss in the break room, slamming his fist on the countertop. So, we should say the character is angry when he is angry. Exactly. And this is the thing we must remember to do. Show, don't tell. Many authors tend to tell the reader what is happening, which makes for uninteresting reading. It is best to show the reader what is happening. Let me give you a different example. 好，的确是如此哦。我们必须要 show it, don't tell it. 就是说呢，你要显示给读者看，而不是直接的告诉读者。那许多的这些作者倾向于告诉读者在发生的事情，这样会使你的阅读呢毫无趣味。那最好呢，向我们的读者展示一下正在发生的事情。我们再看一个例子。He was really excited about his new birthday present. That is telling. 好，我们现在来看这个例子。他看到生日礼物很兴奋。那在这个例子里面，就是用 telling 说明这件事情。He screamed, "Yes, yes, yes!" while jumping up and down around the room after seeing his new birthday present. Here, we are showing his excitement instead of simply telling it. 那如果说呢，当他看到新生日礼物的时候呢，他就尖叫，好棒，好棒，好棒！那在他的屋子里面来回的跳动。那在这个句子里面呢，我们就显示出他是很兴奋的，而不是单纯的只是让你看到他兴奋而已。You see, the second sentence is more exciting because it's showing the emotions instead of telling it. This is important for the setting as well. Just reading a description of the setting is uninteresting. However, as the story moves along 
and more details of the setting become apparent, the setting becomes more and more real. 那我们刚刚那个第二个例子呢比较好呢，是因为它呢是在显示他的情感，而不是只说主角他有怎么样的感觉。那写关于场景的这种描述呢，也是同样的道理。仅仅是阅读这个场景的说明呢，是很无聊的。如果能够随着故事的进行呢，慢慢的描写这个场景它的一些细节，那样场景就会变得越来越真实。Let's look at an example and see if you can guess the setting. 那我们现在看看另一个例子，你看看你能不能猜出它的场景。The doors open swiftly by themselves. The cool air and the smell of tea eggs hit my face. In front of me were glass boxes filled with day-old hot dogs, sweet potatoes, and steam buns. Groups of people, old and young, sat around tables eating noisily. A friendly voice from behind the counter said, "Welcome." 哎，这个场景是这样描述的哦，门自己迅速的打开了。凉爽的空气和茶叶蛋的味道呢，扑面而来。玻璃柜里呢，有一个 day old， day old 这个的意思是说呢，不新鲜的这个热狗，还有地瓜、蒸馒头。不论年龄的大小呢，成群的人们围坐在餐桌的旁边呢，大声的吃饭。柜台后面呢，传来一个友好的声音说：“欢迎光临。”哎，是哪里呀、啊？嗯、mm, ， that sounds like a family mart or Seven Eleven. 它听起来像是一间全家或者是 Seven Eleven. Exactly. I gave the description of the sights and the sounds one would typically experience in such a store here in Taiwan, instead of just saying I walked into a convenience store. There are examples of sights, smells, sounds, and even what the character felt. 是的，我们刚描述了人们通常会在台湾的便利商店中看到的和听到的，而不仅仅是说。I walked into a convenience store. 那如果你只是这样说的话，我走进一家便利商店，这样子听起来就很无聊，对不对？可是我们刚刚描述里面呢，有视觉、有气味、有声音，还有人物的感觉。Now we need to look at the grammar of telling a short story. When writing a narrative based on your own life, the past simple is needed. When writing fictional short stories, you can choose past simple or present simple. 现在我们来讨论一下文法的问题。在根据自己的生活来写这种叙述型的故事的时候，可以用过去简单式。那如果你是要写虚构的短篇小说的时候，你可以选择写过去简单式，或去现在简单式。The、majority of stories, both written and oral, are told in the past simple. If the story takes place in the past, say during the Qing Dynasty, then of course it is recommended to use the past tense. 大部分的故事呢，都是用过去式。例如，在清朝的故事，那么当然建议使用过去式。Laura, can you give me an example of using the simple past in a story? 可不可以给我们一个简单过去式的例子呢 ？Okay, for example, we ran through the forest fearing to look back. 像是我们穿过森林不敢回头。Very good. Now, Tiffany, can you do the same sentence but in present? 嗯、uh, ，非常好。那 Tiffany， 你可不可以用现在式再讲一次呢 ？OK， we run through the forest fearing to look back. 我们穿过森林不敢回头。Great. The the thing to remember is that whichever you choose, keep it consistent. Use the same tense throughout the story. However, if you are writing in the present and you want to tell a backstory or refer to an action that happened in the past, then it is acceptable to switch. 很好，但是要记住的是，无论你选择什么样的时态，故事的前后一定要一致，就是用同样的时态。但以下的情形呢是例外的，比如说呢，如果你正在写的是现在的事情，那你可以用现在式；那你现在突然又要讲到以前发生的事情呢，那你可以用过去式。Let me give you an example. She picks up the stinky tofu. She vomited the last time she tried it, but this time she is determined to eat it. She puts it in her mouth and begins to chew. 好，现在举个例子哦。她上次呢吃了臭豆腐，然后呢她就把它吐出来了。那这次呢她决心要把它吃掉，所以呢她就夹起来，把它放到嘴里，开始咀嚼。The second sentence in the example, she vomited the last time she tried it, but this time she is determined to eat it, refers to an event that happened before the current event. So mixing in the past tense is appropriate. 
在第二句话呢，它是混合了现在式还有过去式。比如说，你看到 vomited 这个字啊，它是过去发生的，所以用过去式。然后呢，它现在又决定了 is determined， 那这是现在决定，所以要用现在式。As a side note, if you're writing in the past tense and need to talk about an event that happened before that, you use the past perfect. Let's do an example of this to refresh your grammar. 那我们再附带说明一下哦。如果你使用的是过去式的时候，那你又要谈论比过去式还要更早发生的时候，这时候我们要用什么呢？就过去完成式，那就是 past perfect 这个的过去完成式。让我们举个例子。She picked up the stinky tofu. She had vomited the last time she had tried it, but this time she was determined to eat it. She put it in her mouth and began to chew. 哎，这句话是说啊，他上次啊吃臭豆腐的时候把它吐掉了，那这次呢，他决心要把它吃掉，所以呢，他就夹起臭豆腐，把它放到嘴巴里面开始咀嚼。那这里的 had vomited 这个呢，就是过去完成式 ，had tried 也是过去完成式。那这里的 picked 是过去式。那我们再比较一下这两个句子哈。那第一个句子呢，就是。一个是现在式，那比现在式更早呢，你就只好用过去式。那比如说 vomited， 还有 tried， 好，它是比现在式还要早，所以用过去式。那我们的第二个例子呢，是比过去式还要早，所以我们用过去完成式。那比如说呢 ，had vomited， 这样子就是过去完成式 ，had tried。过去完成式，所以我们要注意的就是，你到底是要跟哪一个时间比？你如果要跟现在的时间比呢，比现在早就用过去式；那如果你是要跟过去的时间比，比过去还要早，那你就用过去完成式。所以你那个比较的基准点就是你要注意的地方。And that about wraps up the end of our chapter. But before we finally finish, let's recount some of the main ideas we discussed. 好，这大概就是我们今天要讲的。那在我们结束之前，我们再想一想，我们今天学过什么。In this unit, we talked about building a character and the setting in a short story. You should try creating a character profile to use and build on while writing, instead of trying to think of a character while writing the story. 那在本单元中呢，我们就讨论到了在短篇小说中啊，塑造这个角色还有这个场景的方法。那试着呢，创建一个角色的简介来描写角色的特征，而不是在写故事的时候才去思考说，哎，我们这个角色的特征应该是怎么样啊 ？And remember that when writing about the setting, use the five senses of smell, touch, taste, hear, and feel, and where the character is, instead of just listening what the setting looked like. 那请你记住哦，在写这个场景的时候，你要用你的五官来表达它的感觉，而不是只是说出场景它的外观是什么。In the next unit, we will move on with telling the story, the different aspects of telling it, and the pitfalls of ending a story. 在下一个单元呢，我们将继续的讲故事的写作，用不同的面向来讲故事，以及呢如何结束一个故事。那今天呢，非常感谢大家收看这一集的节目，欢迎大家下个礼拜继续收看我们的下一集，拜拜。